What's up guys, in this video you'll be learning about trust, the favorite vehicle of the mega rich to put their money in and to pay less tax. And we're also going to bring South Dakota in the picture. This place, west of Minnesota, the fifth smallest populous state in America with less than 1 million people, is the new Switzerland. Literally, why do the rich need another place to hide their money? Later on in the video, I'll share with you the four features of the South Dakota Trust that make the rich really love this state so much. So a trust is simply a legal arrangement that does three things to provide ownership, management, and distribution of some trust. And it's easiest to think about a trust like a box. And this box is used to place assets in it. And you could place many types of assets in this box. It could be a car, property, painting, antiques, even a like and subscribe button. So around this box, there's actually three important roles. Then you understand how our trust actually works. So let's create an example and start with grandma. So grandma has saved up some wealth and now is planning to distribute it to those in her family. So grandma here is the trust grantor, the person who creates this trust and place the assets in this box. Then let's say there's a person called Mr. Trustworthy. He's known as the trustee because he or his company actually oversee and manage this box according to what grandma wants. Lastly, there's Mr. Lucky. He's the beneficiary who will actually receive the benefits from the assets in this box. And that's it really, all the players in a trust. But why does grandma here need a trust in the first place? So if she wants just to distribute her wealth when she dies, she does have other choices. She actually could leave it to grandpa, trust him to distribute the assets according to her wishes. But it's obviously uncertain how long grandpa will actually live. The second way is grandma could also ask a younger and trusted friend to distribute the assets for her. But there's still little guarantee that after grandma dies, does this trusted friend actually execute the plan according to grandma wants. So in order for grandma to get that execution certainty, she could set up a trust and have it executed as she wishes without any surprises. The other big benefit that the rich love about trust other than the certainty is that there's a lot of protection on the assets which shields it from creditors, bankers, governments, and even unwanted family members. So let's talk about the creditors first. So if you borrowed money before, maybe from a bank to buy a car or a house, you know that if you don't pay up, the bank can actually seize your car, your house, so they can settle off to try to get their money back. But if the assets are in a trust, it gets a bit more complicated for the bank because the ownership of the assets, of the car or the property, is actually now in limbo because the grantor, like grandma, can argue that they don't own the asset anymore. And the trustee, the trust itself, can argue, well, they also don't own anything. They just manage the asset according to a specific contract. And there's, there's a beneficiary. They can also say they also don't anything yet, at least not now, and they haven't received anything from it. So they also don't own the asset either. And that's why the rich and wealthy really like using these trusts because they make the ownership really fuzzy while still keeping control on these assets. Now trusts also come in all shapes and sizes, but without going into detail into all of them, let's talk about some of the main categories by introducing two types of forks to get to know different trusts. The first fork for a trust is whether it is revocable or irrevocable. You obviously don't hear that word every day. An irrevocable trust cannot be modified, amended, or terminated without the permission of the grantor's beneficiary. Basically, it's very hard to change the instructions for the trustee, and this provides the trust a lot of protection at the cost of flexibility. And on the other hand, revocable trust is quite the opposite, and you can actually guess what it means. This type of trust actually allows the grantor, so its grandma, to make changes to the trust terms after the trust has been set up. So there is flexibility, but also less creditor protection. Other fork that differentiates trust is about time. So whether the trust has a fixed life, like whether they will self-terminate after some form of event, like distributing or trust when certain conditions are met, or if the trusts are perpetual, they are never ending, like dynasty trusts. So dynasty trusts never die, they exist in perpetuity. And dynasty trust, which is what South Dakota allows, and I get to that in a sec, is really controversial. And for me right now, my current opinion on these type of trusts, it's just, it's really wrong, ultra selfish to set up, and it doesn't benefit society. And I'll give you an example and you know what I mean. So let's say $1 million was placed into a dynasty trust, and this trust had the ability to get a 6% after tax return every year. And let's forward 100 years. So after 100 years, this $1 million will now become $369 million. And let's forward 100 years again. This money now becomes $136 
billion dollars, which is as rich as Bill Gates. And another 100 years or 300 years in total, this now becomes 50 trillion dollars. Now that's richer and bigger than the whole GDP of America. And that's all it takes to be bigger than America's GDP. One million dollars, 300 years, growing at 6%. That money is so big, it's not taxed, and is usually just within one family. Now do you understand why I think it's so wrong? So the numbers I just talked to you about isn't a crazy scenario or impossible scenario even. Because tiny trusts are allowed, the money is shielded, secretive, and untaxed, and the investment return I'm talking about isn't all that crazy. And it's South Dakota that's making this possible. Before I go into specific, we all should understand what is that big loophole of the financial system, known as FATCAR and CRS. So I'll talk about CRS first, and it stands for Common Reporting Standard. It sounds quite boring, but it has good intentions, just to make taxation reporting more transparent between countries. Governments and tax authorities began to exchange information with each other, so it made it harder for the rich to actually hide their wealth overseas. That is, except in the United States. And this is kind of the first step of taking that pedestal away from Switzerland. So America did not join the CRS system, and they preferred to go on their own way by relying on a Congress enacted law called FATCA, which stands for the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act. Though to be fair, you know, FATCA started actually before the CRS in 2010, but here's the big loophole, because what we have here right now was a CRS system where governments around the world were exchanging financial information, but America wasn't part of the CRS system, which means foreigners could put their assets in America and there was no obligation for the American government to tell anyone else. And that where in America is South Dakota. So here's the four favorite trust features that the rich really love. Unparalleled tax efficiency. South Dakota has no state income, capital gains, dividend interest, or intangible tax. So trusts set up in South Dakota that earn money in their investments are literally given a free pass 24-7, 365 days a year. And to rub it even more, South Dakota also has no state inheritance or state tax, which would kick in when beneficiaries actually receive the asset from the trust that's not taxed as well because assets held in South Dakota are only taxed under South Dakota law. What I just said meant there's no tax at the end point when the beneficiaries get the assets and there's almost no tax while the trust is in operation. Well, that kind of makes me want to move to South Dakota now for tax reasons, but I'm still not sure what I'm going to do there. And I don't have that kind of money. The second feature is no South Dakota residency requirement for the beneficiary because the requirement is actually only the trustee or the beneficiary needs to be in South Dakota, but the trustee is there in South Dakota. So this might not sound that awesome of a benefit to you, but think about the hundreds and thousands of family members of the mega rich who live outside of America. They don't even need to live and work in South Dakota to be the beneficiary of these trusts, yet they can have their money parked for them in South Dakota until they need it. So you can live in the middle of America and have your money in a South Dakota trust. You can also live in the Middle East and have your money also in a South Dakota trust. Without the residency requirement for the beneficiaries, it's just super convenient and almost a no-brainer to set up this trust in South Dakota. The third feature is superior secrecy. Now, South Dakota is like a heaven for the mega rich, not because of the enjoyment of luxury, but because it helps them keep their money super secret. And this is done in two ways. First of all, the court actions in South Dakota relating to these trusts can be sealed forever. So no information actually gets leaked out to the public. Now, secondly, the beneficiaries themselves of the trusts, they also don't need to be notified that they are beneficiaries because the grantor has the option to delay notification until the day they actually die. So that means there's also not gonna be any public notice this way. So you have a situation where the mega rich could set up a trust in South Dakota for someone outside of South Dakota and once everything is set up, no one else is gonna know an actual thing, not a creditor, not your family, not even other governments. Everything is set up to be super secret. And the last feature is there's no termination date on the trust at all. So trust created in South Dakota can last as long or as short as you actually want. And I said earlier in the video, perpetual trusts are quite controversial. And in my opinion, they're actually quite bad because usually trusts last a maximum between 80 to 100 years. So usually it shuts down after one to two lifetimes. And for a state like Florida, it's actually 360 years. But South Dakota actually upped the ante here and made it forever. So for the mega rich, there's really no better 
place to park the money in a trust than South Dakota. So in just 10 years, South Dakota trust companies held $57 billion in assets. 10 years later, this has risen to $360 billion. And I don't think this trend is actually gonna stop soon because the rules are so favorable. So I'm not sure how well you know the rich, you know, what they eat, how they dress, what they do. But after this video, you'll probably be super clear on where they keep their money and why.